Do you need a full frame camera or is a crop sensor camera good enough? Most cameras fall into one of two categories. Either they're a full frame camera with a full frame sensor or they're a crop sensor camera with something like an APS-C size sensor. Crop sensor cameras are typically thought to be more beginner friendly because they're less expensive, they're smaller, the lenses are more affordable, while full frame cameras are typically larger, they're more expensive, and they're for professionals. But that isn't always true. The main difference between these two types of cameras is of course the size of the sensor, where the full frame camera has the bigger, better sensor. But if bigger is better, why stop at full frame? Why not go as big as possible? Well, this right here is a medium format camera and it actually has a sensor that's even bigger than a full frame, but we're gonna talk about that in just a bit. For now, we need to dive back into what is a crop sensor? What What is APS-C? What is, what is crop factor? And why do these things even matter? Simply put, a crop sensor camera is any camera that has a sensor size that's smaller than full frame. So that includes APS-C, that includes micro four thirds, that includes Super 35, which you'll see on cameras like the C70 or other cinema cameras, where they have a smaller sensor, but it's you know a little bit wider for things like video. But crop sensors are also found in action cameras or in smartphones or in anything that has a sensor that's smaller than full frame. So we need to make that distinction that not every crop sensor is APS-C, but every APS-C is a crop sensor. And when we talk about crop, that's actually what we're referring to. You've probably heard people say, what is the crop factor of this camera? And with Sony and Nikon, that number is typically 1.5, which means if you take a camera lens at any set focal length and you put that focal length onto a crop sensor camera, it's gonna be cropped in by that crop factor, or the effect is kind of that it looks like it's zoomed in more. And on Canon cameras, that number is 1.6, but depending on the system, depending on the exact sensor that that manufacturer makes, the crop factor can really be anything. If you've done any shopping for a camera, you've probably looked at megapixels or resolution of that camera. And resolution is tied directly to the sensor. Cameras like the Canon R50 or the R100 have megapixels in the 24 megapixel range. But on the other side of the spectrum, you have cameras like the Canon R6 Mark II that I'm shooting on now, or the Canon R3 that are several thousands of dollars, like $8,000, $8, I think, for the Canon R3. Those cameras also have 24 megapixels, but they're multiple thousands of dollars more than these R50, R100 crop sensor cameras. The pixel density of a crop sensor with 24 megapixels is higher compared to the Canon R6 Mark II or the Canon R3 that has those same amount of pixels spread out over a larger space, meaning those individual pixels are larger. And why that matters for the full frame camera is because larger pixels that have larger surface area can gather more light, which translates into higher dynamic range and better ISO performance so that, you know, you might shoot the R50 at 800 ISO and the R6 Mark II at 800 ISO, but the R6 Mark II will produce a cleaner looking image with, in theory, higher dynamic range. Of course, there are a lot of other variables that go into it, like each year camera tech gets better, the processors that go into these cameras get better at filtering out that noise or improving the signal to noise ratio. But overall, a full frame camera or a camera that has a larger sensor will produce less noise at an equivalent ISO at an equivalent level of light. Whether the photos that you're shooting are coming from a crop sensor camera, a full frame camera or a medium format camera, all raw files need to be edited. And all the photos that you're seeing in this video were edited with my Lightroom presets. Even when I'm doing an edit from scratch, I still like to use my presets to give me an idea of what the edit could look like. Because I know we've all been there where we're looking at the photo and we're like, oh, like how should I edit this? Well, for me, my presets give me that first step that I can see, oh, maybe this is more of like a flat edit. Maybe this is more of like a colorful edit. Maybe this is like a more neutral edit. So I'll throw on my like Ivory Ridge preset or my Thunderbird preset. And right now I'm working on a new Division Two preset pack. So if you already have my current presets and you love them, make sure you check out the links in the description below so you can get notified 
when that new preset pack launches. So then what about APS-C cameras? What is the benefit of owning a smaller camera with a smaller sensor? Well, the first thing is that it is less expensive. It is also smaller, which some people tend to like. Now for me personally, if you compare these older, this is an older DSLR Canon 80D. If you compare the size of that, to the size of this Canon R5, like the bodies are almost the same. So over the years with mirrorless camera tech, these APS-C cameras, these old ones are basically the same size as a mirrorless camera. Now, newer mirrorless cameras that are APS-C are very small, like the Canon R50 or the Canon R100 are kind of like tiny little cameras in your hand, which again, for some people may be a benefit, for others, maybe not a benefit. For anyone shooting on an APS-C camera, you have the benefit of less expensive lenses. Crop sensor lenses are smaller, which means they're more affordable to produce. But that doesn't mean you're only limited to crop sensor lenses. On a crop sensor camera, you can actually put full frame lenses. So you actually have more lenses to choose from if you're shooting on an APS-C camera. Another advantage is that if you take a full frame lens and you put it on a crop sensor camera, you're actually using the best portion of that lens. Typically lenses have an amount of vignetting or distortion that occurs around the perimeter. You can of course see that when you're shooting full frame, but when you're cropped in, on a crop sensor camera, you always use the middle portion of that lens, which is the optically best portion of that lens. And so a lot of the time you eliminate any vignetting that you would have gotten if you had used that same lens on a full frame camera. APS-C cameras also have more reach. Because they're cropped in, it means you can be in the same spot and reach out if you're shooting things like wildlife or sports photography where, you know, maybe you're shooting on a 70 to 200, you apply that 1.5 times crop factor, and now all of a sudden that 70 to 200 becomes a 105 to 300, which then means there's the disadvantage on an APS-C or on a crop sensor camera, where if you wanna get the same framing on a wide angle view, you actually need to step back. I love filming on my wide angle 15 to 35, but if I was to put that onto a crop sensor camera, I wouldn't get as wide an angle as 15. It would look closer to a, a 23 or a 24 millimeter lens. One thing that also changes when going from APS-C to full frame is the out of focus background effect or what we typically refer to as bokeh. Now the bokeh or the blurry background won't change by simply swapping the camera, but what will happen is if you need to step back in order to maintain your framing, that will reduce the amount of blurriness that you get. And there's a there's a whole relationship there where you can calculate distance to your subject and depth of field and, and all that type of stuff. But we're not gonna get that complicated. All you need to know is that if you wanna maintain a certain framing that you will have to step back on a crop sensor camera, which will reduce the amount of blurry background effect that you're getting. There of course are a lot of benefits to shooting full frame cameras. We talked about pixel density and typically full frame cameras have higher resolution sensors. And if we were to compare two sensors that have the exact same megapixels, one being full frame and one being crop sensor, the full frame would in every situation all else being equal, have better ISO performance. And that's also partly because most manufacturers are putting the latest tech into full frame cameras. And then once that camera has been out for a few years and the tech has become cheaper, then it tends to filter its way down to the less expensive APS-C crop sensor cameras. I shot on a crop sensor camera for about 10 years. It was the Canon 70D. And the reason I finally decided to upgrade was one camera tech had improved a lot, but I also didn't like the super small APS-C camera bodies. I actually like a slightly large camera bodies that has a rear dial, a top dial, a front dial that allows you to change your settings a lot faster when you're out in a run and gun shooting scenario. Smaller camera bodies unfortunately don't have as much space for all the buttons and all the custom functions that you maybe don't need when you're first starting out, but as you become more experienced and you, there are certain things you wanna change in the middle of you shooting, having all those extra buttons really does make a difference. Yes, full frame lenses are expensive, but that's because you're getting the best image quality possible. And even if you're shooting APS-C, I still recommend looking at 
full frame lenses in case you ever decide in the future to upgrade your camera body. You've already got those full frame lenses. With full frame lenses, you get things like a constant aperture. So my 24 to 70 has a constant aperture of f2.8. You can also get full frame prime lenses like the Canon R50 1.2 or 1.8 that of course have better optical quality than those crop sensor APS-C kit lenses that tend to have variable apertures. Full frame lenses like this Canon L series lens, the 24 to 70 or G Master lenses will work on a crop sensor camera. But the opposite isn't necessarily true. For most camera systems, you won't be able to take a crop sensor specific lens and put it onto a full frame body. Now with the Canon R6 Mark II and the Canon R5, you actually can do that if you throw your camera into the APS-C crop mode, which means I can take this Sure Cine Nightwalker lens and put it onto my Canon R5, throw it into that crop mode, and now basically what it does, because it has an 8K sensor, is it will zoom in that 1.5 times, and now I get a full 4K image and I can use these APS-C or crop sensor lenses. So make sure you check your camera system and whether or not that type of thing works. But with the Canon cameras, the Canon full frame cameras, you can actually have some level of cross compatibility. If full frame cameras are better than APS-C crop sensor cameras for all the reasons that we just mentioned, then shouldn't medium format cameras be even better than full frame cameras? Well, this is a medium format camera. It's the Fuji GFX 100, and it has like a crop factor or an uncrop factor of 0.79 times. The sensor on this is 1.7 times larger in terms of surface area than my full frame Canon R5. That means it has 70% more surface area to gather light but it is a 100 megapixel camera, which means there are going to be just a ton of pixels shoved into this camera sensor. And typically you don't see camera sensors that are 100 megapixels in a full frame format. Cameras like the Sony a7R are 60 megapixels. The Canon R5 is 45 megapixels. And so if you really want 100 megapixels, then the GFX 100 or a medium format camera, like some of the Hasselblad cameras, are probably what you wanna be looking at. But keep in mind, in the same way that full frame is more expensive than crop sensor, this again is going to be two times, if not three, four, five times more expensive than a full frame camera. Some of those Hasselblad cameras Really expensive. And fun fact, the sensor on this GFX 100 is 100 times the size of an iPhone sensor. That means you could take 10 iPhone sensors horizontally, 10 iPhone sensors vertically, and fit them into the size of this medium format sensor. It's massive. The disadvantage, of course, with medium format is that everything kind of gets bigger, everything kind of gets slower, the cameras are just bigger in the hand, which might not be a problem because it's kind of like having an old DSLR where the grip is bigger, the lenses are bigger, well, the lenses are, are a lot bigger, but it is a premium shooting experience that I wouldn't recommend for everyone. And if you wanna hear more about what a medium format camera can be used for, check out this video right here where I talk about my whole Iceland landscape shooting experience. And until the next one, go shoot photos. <laughs>